Welcome back to PSC Tech Vibe. Today I want to start a new series of episodes about how to use the Microsoft Graph SDK in the context of .NET Framework. The Microsoft Graph SDK is a set of multi-platform libraries that target development platforms like, for example, Python, Java or JavaScript, Node.js, uh, .NET and .NET Core, and so on and so forth. The uh, Microsoft Graph SDK libraries are auto-generated based on the metadata of the Microsoft Graph and allow us to easily consume the REST APIs of the uh, endpoints available in Microsoft Graph. From a .NET developer point of view, the library is defined with an asynchronous model in mind. It is an open source project, so you can find the whole source code on GitHub, and it has been made available for a .NET developer as a set of new GET packages. The main one is the Microsoft.Graph package, then there is the Microsoft.Graph.out package, which is still under preview and which allows you as a developer to easily consume through Microsoft Authentication Library the authentication layer on top of the Microsoft Graph SDK. And then there is the Microsoft.Graph.Beta, which is the uh, library that you can use to consume the beta endpoint of Microsoft Graph. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to start using the Graph SDK in .NET Framework. So let's assume that we have a SharePoint Online site like this modern site, and we want to consume its content uh, using the Microsoft Graph SDK. First of all, we need to go into the Azure Active Directory application configuration and we need to register a new application, which I already did, so that we can get the client ID and the directory ID for the new application. And in the API permissions, we can configure the permissions. In this scenario, I've configured the delegated site.readwrite.all permission for Microsoft Graph in order to be able to read and write the content of my site collections in my current tenant. I want to use the device code based authentication. So in the authentication section, I also configured my application to support the public client flows. Once I've done that, here is my Visual Studio solution. If I show you the new get packages that I have in the installed section, we can see that we have the Microsoft.graph and the Microsoft.graph.out. And as you can see, this one is under preview. So by doing that, we can easily leverage the Microsoft Graph through the Microsoft Graph SDK for .NET. So what I need to do is simply to create a public client application using the Microsoft Authentication Library Public Client Application Builder and providing the client ID and the tenant ID for my target application in Azure Active Directory. And then I build the public client application. Once I've done that, I can create an instance of an authentication provider which is provided by the Microsoft.graph.out namespace, and specifically I'm using the device code provider, so the one based on device code authentication, and I provide in the constructor the public client application object that I just created through the builder. We can also use any of these flavors, so uh, the authorization code provider, the integrated Windows authentication, the interactive authentication, the on behalf of, and the username and password authentication provider. Once we have an authentication provider, we simply need to create an instance of the graph service client providing in the constructor the authentication provider. And that's it. We can then use the Microsoft Graph through the Microsoft Graph SDK. And for example, if I want to access a specific site, I can say graph client dot collection of site. I can get a specific site by path. I will have to provide the name of the target tenant in SharePoint Online and the relative URL of the site that I want to uh, retrieve. And using a Fluent API, I can access the collection of lists in the site that I just retrieved. Then I say that I want to make a request for this target object, and I make a get asynchronously uh, using the HTTP uh, client inside the Microsoft Graph client to make an actual HTTP get request for the collection of lists in the target site. And then I can simply browse the lists. Or I can say, still, give me that specific site, and give me a specific list by ID. And as you can see here, by using an indexer, I can access a specific list by ID. And still, I make a request and I get it asynchronously. And just for the sake of completeness, I show in the console the display name of the just retrieved document library. Moreover, we can also still target the site, a list, and the items in a list. And for example, we can prepare a request where we want to filter all of the items based on the title field value. 
So we say expand the filter uh, complex property of all of the items and filter the items based on the title field inside the collection of filter when it is equal to sample document 01, which is exactly one of the documents that I have in my document library. And in order to do that, I can either uh, configure the title field as an index or I can provide this header to my request, which will instruct the uh, graph as, um, REST API to honor non-indexed queries, uh, uh, avoiding any uh, issue if we make a query filtering by a non-indexed field. And once I've done that, again, I defined my query, I simply get it asynchronously. And then I can browse through all of the results and show the output. And of course, you can do this kind of stuff. You can update items. There will be additional episodes in the future where I will show you how to update items using the Microsoft Graph. But right now, let me execute this example. So let me press Ctrl F5. This is the console application that I see on my screen. Let me copy the URL of the device login in order to access uh, my target tenant. And I will have to provide the device code, which I see right here. So let me copy it and let me paste it in this UI. I will have to confirm the identity of my user and I will be able to see in my console application that I can access the collection of documents in the collection of lists. Then I can just see the uh, document library called documents and then I can see the sample document 01 as the document that I retrieved using the explicit query in the graph SDK syntax. So really simple and straightforward and you can play with SharePoint Online and generally speaking with the whole Microsoft 365 set of workloads using the Microsoft Graph SDK. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.